Thank you for tuning in to the newest episode of the Plain Bible Teaching Podcast. I'm your host, Andy Soker. This episode is being released on February 1st, 2024. And this week we're talking about those who would find the Bible, particularly the writings of the Apostle Paul, to be offensive. In a recent video, a woman who is a pastor in the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America explained during a service that they skipped over some of the text when they read from Corinthians because it was, in her words, yikes, and that Paul was being, quote, a jerk. There are a few things that I want to say in response to that. For links to the video, as well as some related materials, check out the show notes for this episode at plainbibleteaching.com slash podcast slash 0201-24. Now for our discussion this week. Before we get started, we, I wanted to just name something, too, uh, from the reading from Corinthians. You might have noticed that we didn't read one part out loud, and that's because it's yikes. So um, putting that reading in original context, um, Paul himself uh, was a Jewish man, right? And so there were sort of inter-Jewish conversations and disagreements about the role of Jesus and what that means. Uh, but really, in this letter to the Corinthians, Paul's being kind of a jerk, both about Jewish people and about the Greeks. And I saw someone share this video on Twitter or X or whatever it's called these days. I saw someone share this a few days ago, and I thought it would be good for us to address this idea here. This woman is not the only one who thinks this way about certain parts of the Bible, particularly some of the things that were written by the Apostle Paul. And I was not able to find the full video of her remarks, so I'm not able to say for sure which passage it was that she was referring to when she accused the Apostle Paul of being a jerk. So I'm not going to really do an in-depth rebuttal of her specific comments because we just have that short clip here. Instead, I want us to address the broader concept that the Apostle Paul could have been wrong in what he wrote because it does not fit our politically correct society. Because there are a lot of people who believe that that is the case. So there are a few things I want us to consider here today. Number one, Paul's writings were from the Lord. Paul, when he wrote to the church in Corinth, he said in 1 Corinthians 14, 37, If anyone thinks he is a prophet or spiritual, let him recognize that the things which I write to you are the Lord's commandment. Anyone who would question what Paul or any of the other apostles would question what they taught need to recognize that they spoke for Christ. They were his ambassadors, as it says in 2 Corinthians 5 and verse 20, which means they were his official spokesmen. Jesus, when he talked to his apostles in John 16 and verse 13, he promised them that the Holy Spirit would directly guide them into all the truth. He said that to the apostles. He didn't say that to you or me. If we want to know the truth, we need to look at what the apostles taught and what they wrote. That's why Paul said, the things that I write to you are the Lord's commandment, and we need to recognize them as such. Number two, Paul loved his Jewish brethren. This woman in this video claimed that Paul was being a jerk to his fellow Jews. Yet notice what he said about them in his letter to the Romans. Romans chapter 10 and verse 1, he said, Brethren, my heart's desire and my prayer to God for them, referring to the Jews, is for their salvation. Paul's desire was that his Jewish brethren would be saved, and he tried to help bring that about through his work in preaching the gospel. A chapter earlier in the book of Romans, Romans chapter 9, he said, I am telling the truth in Christ. I am not lying. My conscience testifies with me in the Holy Spirit that I have great sorrow and unceasing grief in my heart, for I could wish that I myself were accursed, separated from Christ for the sake of my brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh. Now, we can't trade places with anyone when it comes to our spiritual standing before the Lord. We will each stand before him as individuals to give an account for what we have done in our lives. 2 Corinthians 5 and verse 10 teaches us that. Yet Paul used this type of language to show just how strongly he wanted his fellow Jews to be saved, that he would give anything to help make that happen. 
Number three, Paul made extreme sacrifices to save all men. Now, this goes along with the previous point, but it wasn't just for the Jews. It was for all people. Notice what he said in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, beginning in verse 19. For though I am free from all men, I have made myself a slave to all so that I may win more. To the Jews, I became as a Jew so that I might win Jews. To those who are under the law, as under the law, though not being myself under the law, so that I might win those who are under the law. To those who are without law, as without law, though not being without the law of God, but under the law of Christ, so that I might win those who are without law. To the weak, I became weak that I might win the weak. I have become all things to all men, so that I may by all means save some. As he explained in his second letter to Corinth, in the second half of chapter 11, he endured hardship and tribulations that were far greater than anything that most of us would ever experience. And all of this was for the cause of Christ. So the claim that Paul was a jerk to the Jews and the Greeks is beyond ridiculous. He sacrificed everything in order to do the Lord's work and try to save them. Fourth point, Paul did write some things that are offensive to many people in our society. Let's notice just a few examples from 1 Corinthians. In chapter 6, he says, Or do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor homosexuals, nor thieves, nor the covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor swindlers, will inherit the kingdom of God. This is one of the passages in the New Testament that explicitly condemns the practice of homosexuality. Yet many in our society claim that that behavior is perfectly normal. And not just normal, but people are claiming that this is something that is good. And many in the religious world insist that homosexuals and other people that were mentioned in that text, that they can be saved even if they refuse to give up their sin. But that's not what the Bible teaches. Then in 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 3, Paul said, But I want you to understand that Christ is the head of every man, and the man is the head of a woman, and God is the head of Christ. So here he's talking about gender roles. Men and women are equal, just as Christ is equal with God the Father, but they have different roles. Roles. When it comes to men and women, they have different roles in the home and in the church. But our society has been pushing against that for a long time. That idea is offensive to people. Chapter 14 and verse 34, to go along with that, Paul said, Women are to keep silent in the churches, for they are not permitted to speak, but are to subject themselves just as the law also says. Again, we have this idea of gender roles. Here it is in the church. This passage, along with 1 Timothy chapter 2, 11 and 12, show that women are not to take on the role of public teaching or leadership in the church. And I'm sure this woman in this video that we shared earlier would take issue with what Paul said there in that passage. Now, this is not an exhaustive list, but it's a sample of Paul's writings that many today would find offensive. However, we don't get to decide what is true or not. As we noticed earlier, the Holy Spirit was going to guide the apostles into all the truth, John 16, verse 13. And that included the Apostle Paul. So if our concept of truth is different from what the Bible teaches, including what the Apostle Paul taught, then we are the ones who are wrong, and we are the ones who have to change our thinking rather than saying we're going to change what the Bible says. Number five, Paul's message, the gospel, was foolishness to those who were perishing. He said in 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 18, For the word of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. Many people today arrogantly think that we know more than they did back then. They believe that our society has progressed far past the backwards thinking of previous generations, and they would include 
the apostles and the others who wrote the Bible, they would include those in that, even though they were writing by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. To them, all of that is foolishness. But we don't want to be among that group who think that the teachings of the Bible, the message of the gospel, or the writings of an inspired apostle are foolishness. Because that group is perishing. Those who are being saved recognize that that is the power of God. Paul told the brethren in Thessalonica, For this reason we also constantly thank God that when you received the word of God which you heard from us, you accepted it not as the word of men, but for what it really is, the word of God, which also performs its work in you who believe. So in summary, many people in our society, even some who claim to be Christians, will find the teachings of the Bible to be offensive. Yet we need to recognize that the Word of God is truth. If we don't agree with what the Bible teaches, then we need to change our thinking, not dismiss the Word of God. The Word of God is truth. What the apostles taught, they taught those things from Christ. We need to accept what the Scriptures teach and not think that we know more than they did. That's all for this week. Thank you for listening to the Plain Bible Teaching Podcast. I hope you find this to be interesting, informative, and helpful. For links to that video we talked about, at least the excerpt of that message that was recorded in that video, and other related materials, those will all be in the show notes for this episode at plainbibleteaching.com slash podcast slash 020124. If you have a moment to rate and review the podcast or share it with others who'd be interested, that is always appreciated. And if you're listening to this, remember that we also upload video versions of the podcast to the Plain Bible Teaching YouTube channel. So if you prefer to watch this on video, then that option is there for you. And if you are watching this on YouTube, please like this video and subscribe to the channel so you can see the other videos that we post here from time to time. And if you see a news story or have some topic that you think would make for a good discussion, send that to me at andy at plainbibleteaching.com. Thanks again for listening, and I hope to talk to you again next week.